Greetings from the bayou down in New Orleans, Louisiana. The hometown New Orleans Pharaohs are going to take on the Mexico City Aztecs in a battle for playoff positioning here in the Simulation Football League. Greetings everyone once again live from New Orleans alongside my best friend Cade Stevens. My name is Eric Vincent and we've got a great one here today, Cade. Getting a look at the head-to-head -head comparison here. Uh, we've got two big time running backs on either side. Yeah, Eric, exciting to be back here, especially in New Orleans, Louisiana of all places. Uh, exciting matchup here today. We're starting to uh, get towards the end of the season, so some implications on this game uh, that should affect not only this one, but several others out there today. Yeah, New Orleans definitely has uh, the opportunity to throw a big wrench in a lot of the playoff positioning. We'll get into that later on in the broadcast. For now, we are down in midfield for the coin toss. And it looks like Matt Wilson and company did win the coin toss. They will elect to kick the football to start things off. New Orleans going to get their first crack at the football here in just a moment. Beautiful day here in New Orleans, 78 degrees, south by southeast winds at nine miles per hour. Might be a little bit tricky for the kickers today. We'll have to see what impact that makes on the field. However, we're hashtag make an impact right now as Cole Varner has the ball on the tee, hand in the air, and the ball is in the air as well. We're underway. Inside his own end zone, gonna bring the football up the field, following blocker, stiff arm! He's got some room up the field, and he eventually gets dragged down at the 42-yard line. Great starting field position for the Pharaohs as they take over their good uh, return by Aaron Arrington, the corner, and he sets up his offense, Xander Golden Company, with good starting field position here. Yeah, great return there. Exciting way to start the game. Arrington uh, lowering the boom a little bit with that stiff arm. Uh, it'd be exciting. Hey, we got Xander Gold out here. No running, or I'm sorry, yeah, no running backs in the backfield. Let's see how they start it off. Trips towards the top of the screen. Four wideouts total for Gold to deal with here in the purple and gold. It's going to be a check down and a dangerous pass there as defense was ready for that one. Get a look at the impact players on offense for these Pharaohs. Xander Gold, we mentioned him in his fourth season here in the Bayou. Reggie Streeter coming over from London to be the feature back here. Badir Ajlani, another newcomer. Deezer Powell and Ermac Jackson, the wide receivers. Yasin Clifton, the big time tight end. And Austin Powers will handle the kicking duties here for New Orleans. Second down from the 42. Same formation this time for New Orleans. And pressure coming right away in that defensive front, sending some pressure and a good stunt as we get a look at the impact players here on defense. You saw Nick Daggs coming in there and applying pressure. He's at linebacker. Pablo Zamora, the veteran there at strong safety. Brock Lee, Orion Taylor, Dexter Jackson, all in that front seven. Uh, Zaren Pryor, Han Tayumi, Fran Ogawa, and Jeffrey Daggs round out the secondary there for the Aztecs. Third down and lawn here. Pressure coming from the backside. Xander's gonna air it up, he's got his man! First down and more out to Yasin Clifton, deep into Mexico City territory, and that was just what the doctor ordered. Great pitch and catch from Gold to Clifton on that particular play. We saw the same formation, Eric, three different times in a row. Clearly, New Orleans, uh, there was something that they liked about it that they thought they could take advantage of Mexico City's defense. Went back to it successful on the third try. New Orleans coming into this game is fourth in the SFL in total pass yards per game. Coming out with a different formation this time around, the I formation. And Reggie Streeter will get his first handoff. Throws Nick Dex to the turf, but Pablo Zamora wraps him up after a gain of about five. Yeah, Zamora let him know he was there on that one. He was going to come down and uh, lower just a little bit of boom there, Eric. Yes, sir. Reggie Streeter, the leading rusher last season uh, when he played for the London Knights, coming over to the Bayou. Hasn't been nearly as productive, but still uh, north of 100, or excuse me, 800 yards on the season. And he gets another carry handoff here and will get dragged down just shy of the line to gain third and four coming up here. Yeah, I thought he was going to make the corner there, Eric, uh, but, uh, you know, Dexter Jackson coming up from the outside linebacker position had something to say about that. So that's going to be ring up a third and short. Not nearly as daunting as their first third down, which they did convert with ease on that deep pass to Clifton over the middle. 
Three wideouts towards the top of the screen, showing blitz. Mexico City is going to stack the box, and Reggie Streeter has no problem with that as he plows ahead for a first down yardage and more inside the Esco red zone to the 13-yard line. Did not look like he had much room at all, but threaded the needle and not only got the first down, but a little bit more on top of that, and that's going to move those chains deep into Mexico City territory. Very productive drive for the hometown Pharaohs to start things off. Coming in this ballgame at three and six. Everyone's still alive in the playoff hunt. We'll get to that later on as Reggie Streeter gets another handoff, lowers his shoulders, and will get cut down at the 10-yard line. Good gang tackle there by the Mexico City defense. Dexter Jackson once again. Well, I mean, very interesting so far, I guess, strategy for this first drive. They come out uh, clearly trying to force the ball down the field uh, successfully, I might add and then have now uh, been very successful getting Streeter involved. And uh, you look, they got a second seven almost at the 10-yard line in Mexico City. Gold takes the high snap. He's going to air it out towards the corner of the end zone. Had his man open, but it is called incomplete. Badir Ajlauni couldn't quite get the toe in bounds, and it's going to bring up a third down. Ah, oh, Xander Gold's going to he's gonna kick himself for that one. Ajlauni, with a nice route to the outside, was behind the defense before they even knew. And uh, that ball comes out maybe just a little sooner. It did not look like it was the initial read. If he was, that might have come out sooner. He looks left, comes back right to Xander Gold, and it's just a little too late to sneak that ball in. Going back to that formation that gave them the big pass to Clifton, instead throwing it down towards the near sideline, and that is Ajlauni with his first catch. But he left it a bit short, so it's going to end up being a fourth down, and we'll see an Austin Powers field goal attempt. I'm sure they're probably just a little disappointed with the result of that particular drive as well as they were moving down the field. Uh, Ejlowney, uh, you know, nice way to stay in bounds and, and come up with the catch anyways. But, uh, yeah, going to have to settle for field, uh, field goal here. Sorry, going to have to settle for three. Going to be a chippy here for Austin Powers, another newcomer to this Pharaohs offense from London. This run from about 23. Good snap, good hold. Kick is on the way up and through, officially from 22 yards. And New Orleans strikes first as they hold a 3-0 lead here at home. And Mexico City's offense, they've got some big-time weapons as well. We'll have to see what they have in store for the Pharaohs, Cade. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've got uh, a lot to talk about offensively coming into this game. Mexico City second in the SFL, averaging about 31 points per game. So clearly they can put the points up. It'll be up to uh, it'll be up to New Orleans' defense, see if they can try to slow that down. New Orleans' offense already trying to help them out a little bit by putting points on the board. And a good return for Mexico City as they bring it out to the 21-yard line. Uh, so decent starting field position here as Joe Clark Jr. Uh, brings it up here. He's a newcomer from uh, the now defunct Oklahoma City Renegades as... Matt Wilson, the Hall of Famer, takes over. He's got another Hall of Famer in the backfield, Ray Bentley. And Phoenix Jones looks to be in the backfield as well for this first and ten. And off here, plowing ahead, and that is Phoenix Jones with his first carry. And he will make it out to the 23-yard line, get a look at the impact players on offense. We mentioned the Hall of Famer, Matt Wilson, along with Hall of Famer, Ray Bentley. Uh, both of them incredible weapons for this Aztec offense. Joe Clark Jr., K.L. Barrett, Richard Montague, the wide receivers. And big tight end Mike Daggs, number 83, is a weapon as well to go along with Cole Varner. The uh, SFL's all-time leader in made field goals as another handoff goes to Phoenix Jones. And he makes the most out of that second carry as he goes out to the 33-yard line. A good gain there. Yeah, great run there by Mexico City's first round pick. 16th overall fullback Phoenix Jones to the right side. Plenty of room and a fantastic block there from Ray Bentley on the outside to really spring him for additional yardage. And both these running backs in the backfield there for the Aztecs, they, they certainly coincide well with each other. Uh, Bentley, obviously the feature back, um, only having 600 yards uh, coming into this game, 602 yards to be exact. Phoenix Jones with 229. Uh, but this is what the Aztec offense will do here as we get a first down. Wilson going to air it out, and he had Mike Daggs. Mike Daggs just inexplicably drops it, and that's going to be an incomplete pass, second down. Uh, he's going to kick himself for that one. I think maybe he was just uh, imagining the open field he had behind him there, and uh, he might have continued marching a pretty good ways had he come up with that one. He did have to come back for it slightly behind him a little bit, but uh, knowing tight end Mike Daggs, he most likely is a little upset. And, uh, the besties there just could not connect. 
And I know Dags is kicking himself a little bit, but uh, Matt's going to throw it his way once again, I'm sure, as he's changing things up at the line of scrimmage. Both running backs in the backfield. It's another handoff. That's Phoenix Jones trying to follow blockers, and he does. He's got first down yardage and more down the far sideline. 25, 20, and eventually thrust out at the 21-yard line as the defense finally caught up with him. But, man, Phoenix Jones is coming to play today. Oh, absolutely. And he uh, a, phen a phenomenal block on the outside there by the guard, Stu McKenzie, to really spring him out, as you'll see it right there on the replay. And after that, I mean, pure speed. Nobody was going to catch him except for uh, except for where he ended up there, I guess, around the 20-yard line. Must have got a little bit tired. You talked about this earlier in the drive, Eric. It's a dual-headed running back monster with Bentley and Jones in the backfield, and it's exactly what Mexico City's offense can do. Don't be surprised here to see Wilson take a shot at the end zone. See what he does here. Instead, it's going to be a handoff to Ray Bentley, and his first handoff goes nowhere. In fact, they will be losing yardage as good old Bryce London, the fourth over, excuse me, Bryce Lincoln, the fourth overall pick, gets in there for the stop. We see him along the impact players. Tank Bennett, the SFL's leading tackler at strong safety. Chris Leon, 10 sacks to his credit. Ovaltine Jenkins, Zig Washington, Ray West along with Levant Irvine, Aaron Arrington, Rollerman Hood, and Dante West. A big-time defense for the New Orleans Pharaohs as Ray Bentley gets a big handoff, and he's going to be into the end zone. Touchdown, Mexico City. Great run by Bentley, and there it is. The two-headed monster was Mexico City's answer on this particular drive. They're going to put six on the board. A very nice run by Bentley to get on the outside right there. And, uh, wow, what a, what, a, what a nice piece of icing on that cake for that drive. And uh, uh, getting another look here at the replay. And uh, Bentley just being very good about following blockers. A vicious spin move there. And you can't really can't really game plan for that, kid. No, it's hard, to, it's hard to game plan for. And there's a reason that that would be Ray Bentley's eighth touchdown of the year. Cole Varner coming in there for his first extra point attempt. The unique straight on kicking approach here for Varner. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up and through Mexico City. Besting New Orleans on their first possession. Up 7-3 early, but plenty more football to come here from the Simulation Football League. Stay with us. We're live on 11 Sports and for the fans. Don't go anywhere. Back live in New Orleans as Mexico City takes their first lead of the ball game early on with 534 left to go here in the opening frame as Cole Varner boots it down the field to Aaron Arrington. He's going to field it and take it out of his own end zone. He had a decent return to start things off as he brought it out to the 42 last time around. Not so much this time, but still good starting field position for Xander Gold and company. Okay, they did have a very productive first drive, and uh, we haven't seen Deezer Powell involved just yet in the offense. Uh, but he is definitely the playmaker from the receivers. Yeah, absolutely. And and as New Orleans' offense, I'm sure would like to do is to get him involved coming into this particular football game. He's got 59 catches on the year, 905, almost to 1,000, and eight touchdowns, averaging just over 15 yards a catch. I mean, that's your playmaker. Get him involved and uh, potentially get down the field, score a little bit more than three points here. And it's a decent start there as it's a gain of five yards out to the 28-yard line that was Lynch with the catch. And K.O. Barrett, the other one over on the uh, Mexico City side of things, and uh, he hasn't necessarily been involved yet either. But again, still early on, still plenty of time to get these guys involved. As Gold is going to sling it out to Reggie Streeter, he's got plenty of room to operate. Eventually gets plowed right out of bounds, and that was a big-time tackle but not before first down yardage is achieved. Han Tayumi with the big hit. Yeah, Tayumi letting him know he was there, but Streeter, a nice little uh, wheel route there. It appeared to the outside, and a good read by Xander Gold to get him the football and get the first down. That's going to move those chains. Empty a little one-handed grab as we see him head towards the sidelines there. 
And New Orleans did something very similar this past uh, drive here. As they methodically moved the ball, a huge play to Yassin Clifton set up that field goal. Uh, but Reggie Streeter was involved heavily, and he's getting involved again as Pablo Zamora eventually knocks him down to the turf. Uh, but a good gain of nine on first down brings up second and short. Big reason for success for New Orleans right now is Reggie Streeter, and he shows you again on that play he is not afraid to deliver the hit himself to the defense, gaining nine yards after lowering the shoulder. Just about four minutes to go here in the opening frame. Streeter, the single back, heavy set for the Pharaohs as Streeter gets another handoff and avoids tacklers as he eventually plows ahead for first down yardage as Dexter Jackson was the one who wrapped him up. Getting a look at the playoff positioning here, and this is updated, folks, uh, as a result of the Arizona victory over St. Louis. So the head-to-head -head win has Arizona and St. Louis right there. Uh, but Arizona, obviously, with the tiebreaker. And New Orleans can certainly throw a big old wrench in everybody's plans as Mexico City sits at that 10th spot right there, right at the cusp of playoff positioning, Kate. Yeah, it's uh, it, things are getting dicey for teams out there, and I'm sure New Orleans would like to be that team here who really, uh, like you said, messes up the whole four and six race here. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's getting towards the end of the SFL season. It's exciting, folks. Stay tuned, stay active, and stay up to date on what's going on. And we'll get to the upcoming schedule. This is only the second day of action, folks. Only the second day. We've got plenty more games after this, and we've still got plenty more to go here in New Orleans. As Gold throws it down to the near sideline, caught Badir Ajlauni very close to another New Orleans first down as it'll bring up a third and short. Well, he fought for that one. I thought it was going to be a little closer than what it was, but uh, nice catch there by Ajlauni getting close. And uh, as you said there, third and short coming up for New Orleans. Certainly Registreeter territory. We'll see if he gets the handoff here. Again, a heavy set for New Orleans, four down linemen. For the Aztecs, Streeter able to get the first down yardage with ease as he plows ahead to the 36-yard line, 38-yard line, excuse me, as they will mark him down there with two and a half and two and a half or less to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, Pablo Zamora, strong safety there coming up to make the tackle for Mexico City, and they just have uh, absolutely no answer right now for Reggie Streeter, who's doing just about anything he wants every time uh, New Orleans is giving him the football here. New Orleans offense showing good balance. We've seen success come from this formation already as Gold throws it to the far sideline there. Maybe let him a bit too far as the wide receiver was wide open. Good catch made by Deezer Powell for a gain of eight, but could have gone for a lot more. Yeah, Powell getting involved just kind of snuck behind there. Han Tayumi, who I'm not sure uh, was aware that Powell got behind him. And uh, you're right, Eric, if he's not led so far, he might be up the field for quite a bit more. Something that Xander will probably be kicking himself for as he goes back to the huddle here. But being a quarterback, kind of have short memory. See what he has in store here for the Aztec defense. Second and two from the 30. Delayed handoff. Reggie Streeter trying to throw a spin move there. And actually, that's the backup, it looks like. Uh, LJ Jackson getting a carry. And he is very close to another first down. Yeah, they had to give Streeter a little bit of a, a break there, I suppose. Probably needed to take a breath. He's been a workhorse on this drive, but uh, if there was ever a time I would expect him to see the football, it's going to be right here on third and inches. And again, we're seeing that heavy formation here for New Orleans. Streeter with the carry, following blockers, stumbles, gets back up, trying to plow ahead, and eventually gets close to the 15. They'll mark him down at the 17-yard line. Reggie Streeter, nine carries, 49 yards. That's a good average to start things off. Yeah, Dexter Jackson needed a little bit of help from the cornerback. Zarin Pryor on that particular play. It took two of them to get him down, and they still struggled to do it. Halfway to that century mark, and we haven't even gotten through the first quarter of action. But Pablo Zamora has been very active as we get a look here at him at his strong safety spot. Three wide out, single back formation for the Pharaohs. Gold will throw. As time, going to throw it over the middle to a crosser, and that's caught. That is Ermac Jackson with his first catch of the ball game for a gain of six. A good little catch by Jackson over the middle there. That's a nice, that's the chunk that you'd like to take on first down. Set yourself up with options on second and four. You can choose to uh, take a shot at the end zone if you'd like, knowing that third and four is not that uh, insurmountable. It'd be interesting to see what they're going to call here. Probably the last play before the end of the first quarter. 
Single back formation again as Streeter gets it. Lowers his shoulder and almost gets to the end zone before he's game tackled at the two yard line. And New Orleans is setting themselves up nicely here at home. Absolutely, Eric. I just don't know why you give it to anybody else right now. Streeter is uh, is all business, taking it awfully close uh, to the goal line there and bringing us to the end of the first quarter. Samora sticking his nose in there once again, but instead gets the business end of Reggie Streeter as he gets thrown down to the turf. As you mentioned, Kay, we have hit the end of first quarter action here in the Bayou. Stay with us. We got more Simulation Football League action. Second quarter action just getting underway here in New Orleans as the Pharaohs are in business. First and goal from the two. Mexico City trying to hold New Orleans to another field goal. Gold with a seven step drop, pressure coming and he's gonna go down. Can't escape that one as the pressure was there and uh, that's a big time loss of seven back out to the nine yard line. Well, I think he know exactly what he wanted there. And when his first read wasn't uh, available, that's uh, gold that is, Eric. He just uh, had nowhere to go with it. I, I am slightly surprised with the first quarter that Reggie Streeter had that the oh. initial play there just wasn't to give it to him. And now you've backed yourself up and uh, a little bit uh, harder of a situation, but still wouldn't be uh, that surprised to see Streeter get the football again here. Week five signing Braden Ennis getting in there and making the sack. As Gold takes a short drop, he's going to zing it over the middle of the field, wide open. Touchdown, New Orleans. Great throw, great catch by the wide receiver number 88, Ermac Jackson, on that play in his first season with New Orleans coming over from Oklahoma City. Great catch, great touchdown, and a much better read. That I mean, just to work to perfection, Xander Gold hit him in stride right in the back of the end zone. Yeah, Mexico City's defense had no answer there as uh, just found the hole in the zone, uh, Jackson did. And is, is he was able to rack up New Orleans' first touchdown of the afternoon. Austin Powers lining up for the extra point to give New Orleans a three-point lead. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is through. 10 to seven, your score, as the Pharaohs retake the lead from Mexico City. We're going to take a short break. Stay tuned to these messages. You'll be right back here for more Simulation Football League action on 11 Sports and for the fans.
10 plays, 53 yards, capped off with a nine yard passing touchdown from Xander Gold to Ermac Jackson as New Orleans retakes the lead from the Mexico City Aztecs in a big time playoff implication game as Joe Clark Jr. gets the return and brings it out to the 20 yard line. Well, for those of you viewing for the first time, what the heck are you watching? Well, this is the Simulation Football League. For the first control of this eSport, we allow you, the viewer, the fan, to participate in all of the action on the field without a controller in your hands. Visit simulation.football for details on how to get started with a team, get yourself in the league. Uh, we've also got a new minor league. We'll go ahead and we'll tell you about that here in the coming moments. As Ray Bentley gets a handoff, he, is, he will plow ahead here to the 24-yard line, and he will get a gain of four on first down. Yeah, two-headed monster. Let's see if they try to bring it back. Mexico City, I'm sure, would like to come up with an answer after that uh, absolutely splendid touchdown drive by New Orleans. Can't really beat a 10-play scoring drive, especially when it's capped off with a touchdown. Just south of 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Mexico City with their second possession, and Phoenix Jones with another impressive carry. Uh, he's certainly been the more impressive of the two as he's got 67 yards to his credit already. Yeah, he's been fantastic so far. And uh, the first Mexico City uh, game we did earlier this year, we talked about him a lot as he was uh, Mexico City's first-round pick this year, and uh, he didn't do much then. Uh, but it's nice to see him you know, kind of developing as the year has come along. So if the time comes where Ray Bentley finds himself moving on from Mexico City or vice versa, at least they know they've got a good one in Phoenix Jones. Now, don't speak that blasphemy into existence, Cade. Okay, I Ray would Bentley. never do such a thing. He is going to be an Aztec for life. Matt Wilson going to sling it back down his way towards the near sideline. Spin move as he gets gang tackled close to first down yardage. Uh, and that's going to bring up a second and two. Tank Bennett getting in there along with Levant Irvine. And Bentley speak of the devil there. A nice wheel route out of the backfield for a gain of eight. Second and very manageable here. Wilson coming up to the line. He's going to have both backs in the backfield there, both Jones and Bentley. New Orleans stacking the box, anticipating a run. We'll see if they get one. They do. It is Phoenix Jones. Actually, it's Ray Bentley this time, and he throws a couple impressive spin moves once again, getting first down yardage close to midfield. The signature Bentley spin cycle at it again as he makes two people miss before he's taken down on that play for a first down. Move those chains. And, man, he's just making that defense look silly out there. His bodies are just flying all over the turf. We'd love to see it. All over. Uh, you had to throw this out there, too. Eric Tank Bennett, strong safety, who made the tackle on that play, also leads the SFLs in tackle this season. Yes, sir. Mentioned that earlier at the top with the impact players. Definitely got to highlight it once again as Wilson's going to go deep, and he's got his man out to the 25-yard line. That is K.L. Barrett, the other impact receiver that we spoke of earlier in the broadcast. Absolutely, and a great catch, great route by him getting behind the defense and snagging that football right out of the air. That's, what, that's how you do it, kids. Don't let the ball come to your body. Use your hands and make a catch. Never body catch. Never body catch. As Dante West makes the tackle there, get a look at Phoenix Jones. Four carries, 67 yards. Great average there for the young fullback, the 16th overall pick in the most recent SFL rookie draft. First and 10 from the 25 for the Aztecs. Hand off again to Jones. He slips out of another tackle and eventually gets shown the turf. And that is Dante West again coming in there laying the lumber. Boy, for a moment there, it just didn't look like he was going anywhere. And the fact that he got four yards out of that, I'm pretty impressed before West came in and cleaned that one up. A couple chat chat out, chat shout outs, excuse me. I'm dyslexic all of a sudden. Mike and Proda, uh, Camp Commandant, uh, Batty Nasty, Coach Craven, along with many others. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Simulation Football League here on this fine Sunday afternoon as Wilson is going to air it out again. Into coverage, tipped in the air and incomplete. He was looking for the bestie there, Mike Daggs, and couldn't quite connect with him again. Third down coming up. Uh, Dante West making his presence known once again, coming in and nearly intercepting that football. I'm sure Daggs would have liked to have had that one. And another important stat line to kind of highlight here as Matt Wilson is two touchdowns shy of passing Rocco Marconi for the all-time passing touchdown lead. Uh, so that one obviously there uh, would have been very important to Matt Wilson as that would have tied him. We'll see if he can do that here on this third and six. No drop at all. Pressure coming right away, and he's going to go down. Fourth down coming up here for the Aztecs as Chris Leone gets in there for his 11th 
sack of the season. My goodness, somebody might want to ask him uh, what day of the week it is because he got absolutely annihilated. Get a look at Chris Leone's stats. Why don't you go ahead and read that highlight for us, Kate? Uh, Laissez les bon temps rouler, as they say in New Orleans, let the good times roll. And Chris Leon certainly did on that play and has all season long, racking up 10 sacks. That was his 11th total for the season. As Cole Varner gets field goal try up and through to tie the football game here at 10 apiece. Right down Main Street, right there. Yeah, right down Main Street. Good uh, good drive by Mexico City to tie the football game up 10 all. I'm sure they would have liked a little bit more out of that, I know. As you made mention of, uh, Wilson is aching for those uh, two touchdowns, I'm sure, to take the all-time lead in SFL touchdowns. And I'm sure he'll have his opportunity, Eric. I'd be very surprised if that didn't happen in this game. 100% as Aaron Arrington is not going to return this one as he kneels it in the end zone. Four possessions, four scores. This one, a nine-play, 58-yard drive that resulted in the 41-yard field goal by Cole Varner. So 10-10, your score here in the Bayou. And we've got more to come here with 6.38 to go here in the first half. Cade, we have had nothing but good games so far here this week in Week 10. And so far, it looks like this game will continue that tradition, barring any sort of unforeseen circumstances as we see the king of the first half so far, Reggie Streeter, take another catch out of the backfield for a gain of seven. And I think Phoenix Jones would have something to say about that as he's been very impressive on the ground himself. But Streeter, very impressive both in the backfield, uh, coming out of the backfield as a receiver and as a running back. It's been, uh, you know, not necessarily looking at this game as we did prep work this week, Eric. I think uh, what we expected for uh, a little bit of a running back showdown between New Orleans and Mexico City. Second down and short single back formation as Streeter is that single back. Heavy set. They've dominated Mexico City on defense with this formation and continue to do so as Streeter gets another first down after the 37 with just under six to go here in the half. And the way he just hits the hole uh, as soon as he takes the handoff from the line of scrimmage, that's been the key to his success so far. Following blocks, but also not dilly-dallying a little bit. That hole closed up so fast that if he has, uh, it, you know, if he shows more patience and hangs in the backfield, that's most likely a tackle for a loss. Hitting the hole at full speed and creating plays. Certainly don't want to dilly-dally. I love how you threw that one in there, man. But of course. Offset eye formation for the Pharaohs this time around. First and 10 from the 37. Streeter off tackle handoff this time. Following blockers and good defense there by Mexico City coming up and closing in. Next up on the schedule, we got Charleston coming in to South Florida to play the Storm as we've got more Simulation Football League action coming up at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on 11 Sports and for the fans. But don't go anywhere right now. We've still got more football right here in front of us as New Orleans trying to retake the lead here from Mexico City in the first half, second and seven. Gold, long drop, instead going to check it down. And Cade, I, I have to say that he was probably wanting the home run there, but instead settled for Ajlani over the middle. Uh, I think he did. I think he did. He looked deep. He looked deep. But uh, I give Gold an awful lot of credit as he didn't dwell on that too long and got rid of the football while he still had an opportunity, though it would be for a minimal gain on that play. So another third down for New Orleans. Gold. Plenty of time, going to throw it over the middle. Caught, first down yardage out to about midfield. That is Deezer Powell getting another catch. And that's actually close to midfield at the 49-yard line. Close to midfield, great. You know what, I give uh, Deezer a good, uh, a lot of credit on that play because the ball was thrown low and behind him. And uh, defense had all, every opportunity in the world to knock that away, but uh, made a clutch catch uh, in that situation, gave him a first down, and that drive is going to keep going. Chains are going to move, move, move. Hand off again to Streeter. This time brought down only about a gain of a yard and a half, and that's probably his uh, shortest run, I think, on the ball game today, Kate. Uh, you know what? I, don't, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. And uh, Reggie Streeter has become good friends with linebacker Dexter Jackson so far in this game with a little bit of help from number 99 Taylor on that particular play. Uh but, uh, yeah, you're right, Eric. Shortest shortest run of the game, I think, for him so far. Going to get another crack here, and he throws the shoulder down once again. He's been very good about that, and poor Nick Daggs, along with Pablo Zamora, have uh, poked their heads in there once or twice, and uh, they paid for it. 
Yeah, he's uh, he's making them pay, and that's uh, that's what's nice about Reggie Streeter. I think that's what's great and what they were hoping to get from him coming over from London, his first season here with New Orleans, as you made mention earlier, is that, uh, man, he makes them pay. And as you do this more throughout the football game, by the time the third and fourth quarter comes around, man, they just do not want to hit this guy anymore. Third and short. Golden's going to check it down. And Streeter once again somehow making something out of nothing. He was dead to rights as Ogawa had him right there. But instead, he will plow ahead, get first down yardage, and continue to move those chains. Ogawa had him right about at the line of scrimmage and carried yes. him for about three, three and a half yards for the first down. Absolutely incredible play. Gold, another short drop. He's going to throw it over the middle into coverage and incomplete. Uh, old Dexter Jackson out there had an opportunity at the pick and couldn't quite hold on. Drop and he's gonna he's gonna beat himself up a little bit for that one. That could have been a uh, a tide turner, momentum shifting play for Dexter Jackson in Mexico City there, and uh, instead the ball hits the turf and New Orleans gets another opportunity here on second and ten. Two minute warning creeping closer and closer. Clock frozen at two thirty six. Gold barking out orders at the line. Offset eye formation for the Pharaohs. Streeter with another handoff. Trying to find a hole. Nothing doing there as Jackson gets in there once again, making another tackle. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, once again, we saw earlier in this drive what appeared to be his shortest run of the game. Now we can confirm that most likely was. But, uh, yeah, it's unusual so far to see him get stopped uh, for less than a few yards of carry. But uh, get him around the ankles. I think they're learning real quick. That's the way to do it. Third down, gold, empty. Gonna throw it towards the bottom of the screen. Caught. Ermac Jackson with another clutch catch. Had the touchdown reception earlier, and he gets a first down out to the 30. Yeah, great throw to the outside and great catch by Jackson. As we have hit the two minute warning here in New Orleans, down in the bayou, we've got impressive simulation football league action. More to come. 10 10 your score. Stay with us on 11 Sports and for the fans. Welcome back to New Orleans. If you're new to the SFL, get your spot in the SFL Minor League SFLM today to hashtag claim your spot and begin your SFL career. Subscriptions are going fast and the inaugural kickoff begins next month. First pro subscribers get first priority on choosing their position, so don't delay your career another second as Reggie Streeter is showing why he is one of the more impressive running backs in the SFL as he plows ahead for another couple yards. Last meeting and the only meeting uh, between these two squads, Kate, up here on the screen, and Mexico City took a beating uh, to the New Orleans Sparrows here at home. Yeah, they sure did. They got uh, absolutely throttled. As you can see, Ray Bentley had a heck of a game. 19 carries, 219 yards averaged, over 11 yards carry in that game, and that was a big reason they won. And got to sling it out to the fullback this time around. Not as much success as Streeter as he gets buried in the backfield. Uh, Targaryen there, or if he's uh, related at all to anybody in the north, or south. I don't, I don't know where they are. In the Midwest there, would you say? <laughs> the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> so as the Targaryens don't bleed into the sun. <laughs> Third down and nine. Xander Gold gonna air it out deep into coverage and incomplete, looking for Deezer Powell on that end as it hits the turf 60 seconds left to go here and we'll see another field goal attempt from austin powers absolutely blanketed coverage on the outside right there i believe that was uh jeffrey daggs on the coverage if i'm not mistaken but uh no chance for new orleans to come up with that one and here we go for a groovy field goal attempt this one no gimme gonna be a 45 46 yarder here for powers <laughs> Low snap, two gets it down, and the field goal is up and through from 45 yards. Dan, 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 dan. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. 
Really was no gimme though, Kate. I mean, especially with the bad snap and everything, and he just boots it right down Main Street there, right down yeah. the middle. Yeah, I held my breath for a moment. I really, uh, there was a real good chance that one was potentially going to be blocked. Bad snap low, and Mexico City with some good uh, penetration around the corner on the outside. Uh, it, uh, three points that very, very, very clearly could have not been three points. So, yeah, we'll take that as a, or I guess you know, guess they, uh, they'll take that as a victory there. Joe Clark Jr. with the return here. He is a dangerous return, man, but have not seen a huge return just yet from the Aztecs as he brings it out to the 21-yard line, just shy of a minute to go here in the half. Both teams with all three timeouts, though, and uh, we've seen scoring drives from uh, every single possession from both these teams. Yeah, we sure have, and uh, don't be surprised here to see Wilson really kind of lean on KL Barrett and uh, the big tight end Mike Daggs to try to get down the field and make something happen here in 50 seconds. Split backs, fires over the middle, and that is Mike Daggs with a catch and a first down as he makes it out to the 34-yard line. Aztecs going no huddle. Wilson, again, with a quick throw, tipped up in the air and incomplete. Uh, he was looking, I believe, for Montague there on that play, but good defense out there by Arrington and company. Yeah, good defense indeed, sticking close. And, uh, yeah, he didn't really have too much with Montague. He was covered up extraordinarily well by that uh, that secondary out there of New Orleans. Freezes the clock at 35 seconds, so a chance for Mexico City to reset. Offset eye formation. New Orleans stacking the box. Anticipating a run here. Takes the snap. That's going to be Phoenix Jones with another carry. And a good open field tackle there made by Zig Washington as the Aztecs are forced to burn their first time out. Yeah, might as well hand it to Jones. So look at the first half he's had. We're going to get an indication right here, a little, a few, uh, a reminder of Phoenix Jones' power. Yeah, you, you're right, Eric. I, I messed up earlier when I said the king of the first half, Reggie Streeter, because Phoenix Jones uh, has had an awfully good first half as well. Anytime you're eclipsing a Hall of Famer in the backfield, I mean, it's, it's got to be a good one. Yeah, would have to agree with that. Third and short with 31 seconds to go. Wilson under center. Hand off. That is the Hall of Famer Red Bentley with the first down. Out to the 45-yard line. Mexico City being a little stingy with their timeouts as they go no huddle. Plenty of time being taken off the clock here. Wilson going to throw it. That's Montague with the catch close to midfield. For as much time as they took, I really thought maybe they'd take a shot a little deeper than that. Uh, you know, that's kind of what I was thinking. That They do burn a timeout here with three seconds to go, uh, but certainly puzzling clock management here from Mexico City uh, as they uh, we get a look at the sideline there at Ramos Lynn. And, uh, you know, they're within Hail Mary range for sure. Uh, Matt Wilson certainly with a cannon of an arm. But, uh, yeah, that's a head scratcher there, kid. Indeed, indeed. Uh, uh, I think a mismanagement of the clock there towards the end of the first half where they really had an opportunity, I think, to make a little bit more happen. And we're going to see the Aztecs come out. Hail Mary formation. Only three down linemen for the Pharaohs on defense. Wilson stepping up, going to hurl it towards the end zone. Hit as he's thrown. Tipped up in the air and incomplete. Uh, looks like it was just a bit short of the end zone as uh, that, that was probably an effect of uh, him being hit as he's thrown. Yeah, I have to imagine that the shot that he took uh, right about mid-level on the body really affected his ability to get the ball up there. But, uh, excuse me, a heck of a heave anyways to try to get it to the end zone and almost an interception off the tip drill. But, uh, like I said, kind of an interesting end to the half there for him. Uh, slight mismanagement maybe of the clock. They could have gotten something done. But as you'll see here, uh, the rushing yards for both teams. We're looking at Mexico City over 100, and uh, New Orleans not too far behind there. Yeah, first stop by either team uh, here in this ball game. Uh, the only possession we've had that did not result in any sort of points, which is kind of mind-boggling if you think about it here, kid. Yeah, mind-boggling indeed, and I, I'd like to argue the only reason that's probably the case is because they ran out of time. Uh, had more time been on the clock, there's some potential we could have seen another score on that drive. I'd imagine so as well, but uh, as you mentioned, Phoenix Jones uh, has been very impressive. Uh, pair him along with the Hall of Famer Ray Bentley, and he's been very, very impressive as well. 
Uh, not nearly to the effect as Phoenix Jones. He's certainly taken uh, the brunt of the carries today, but Reggie Streeter as well uh, over on the opposite end for New Orleans. Very, very good. Xander Gold, very efficient. I mean, both these teams are playing like their playoff lives depend on it. Absolutely, and they do, and they do. It's uh, They must know. I guess they figured it out at this point. But, uh, yeah, the the running head, uh, I'm sorry, the dual-headed monster of Ray Bentley and Phoenix Jones. Bentley uh, getting the more more of the passes out of the backfield. Jones taking it a little bit more in between the tackles, and both of them have been very successful in what they've uh, been able to accomplish so far in this game. A close one, folks, 13-10 to 10 still. New Orleans with the lead at home here at halftime. Uh, second half adjustments, Eric, what do you see? Second half adjustments, I mean, both these teams are going to have to do some adjustments on defense. Uh, New Orleans, they've kind of had the crystal ball a little bit, and they have stacked the box uh, when they see Phoenix Jones or a running formation, really. Uh, but they have not stopped them, really. It, it, it's kind of mind-boggling. It really is. Uh, yeah, but I, I think I think the run game definitely has to be adjusted for either team uh, on defense. I'm sure Mexico City would like to slow down Reggie Streeter, just like New Orleans would like to slow down Ray Bentley and Phoenix Jones. And uh, whichever team is successful in doing that, most likely will be victorious here. Austin Powers will boot the ball down the field to Joe Clark Jr. as the Aztecs get the second-half kickoff to start things off here. And he will bring it out to the 23-yard line. Follow the SFL on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and more. All at Simulation FL. That is all our username there. Make sure to catch more content like the Kramer Show, game highlights, and more by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a moment of the action when we're not on TV like we are right now, live at 11 Sports and for the fans. Lovely to see all of you guys here with us for Simulation Football League action as Ray Bentley gets a handoff, or excuse me, he gets a pass out of the backfield. Excuse me, as Lamont Irvine makes the tackle for a gain of five. Wow, before that play, I got to be honest, Mexico City, uh, a nice nice job taking advantage of the defense that they were given. New Orleans had 10 players in the box on that play, one high safety, and a little wheel route to the outside was a nice way to get five yards on that play. I'm actually kind of surprised they did not get more. See what they can get here. Second and five, Ray Bentley. Man, he was about maybe one or two tacklers short of busting that one for a big gain as he's already got a rushing touchdown on his resume today. I'm sure he's looking to get his piece, too. He's no second fiddle to Phoenix Jones, uh, who had a long run, a few long runs earlier in this football game. Ray Bentley wants his. Third and short. Wilson, pressure's coming. He's going to go down. Got absolutely thwacked by the defender coming in there, and uh, there was just no escape as Zig Washington gets in there, makes the stop. Yeah, from the defensive tackle position coming over first season from Vancouver with New Orleans here. And uh, I think that's what uh, the kids call getting yeeted these days. Is that, is that a yeet? I don't, I don't know what that is. Yeah, something like that. Well, you're younger than I am, man. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Brings up our first punt here of the afternoon as Henry Hako with his first punt here. Decent one as it's fielded just north of the 40 yard line. Gotta bring it out to the 45 is Aaron Arrington and we will take a short break. Stay tuned to these short messages. We'll be back with more Simulation Football League action live on 11 Sports and for the fans, don't go anywhere. Back live in the bayou alongside my best friend, Kate Stevens, Eric Vincent here for Simulation Football League Action. We've got Mark Lopez down there in the stat truck, executive producer and commissioner, Cameron Irvine, assisting us today, live on 11 Sports and for the fans, as the Pharaohs with a three-point advantage, hands off to Reggie Streeter as he's been very productive on the ground. Out for a gain of six, second down. Breaking two tackles before taken down by the strong safety Pablo Zamora on that play. Get a look at Xander Gold coming up to the line. 
been very efficient today. No interceptions, no turnovers uh, to speak of from either team. Single back formation. Streeter with another handoff following blockers. He's going to go towards the near sideline. He's got some speed and eventually gets tackled there by the secondary, and he's eclipsed the century mark. 18 carries, 104 yards. Tayumi, the last possible person who's probably going to get him on that play. Once again, Reggie Streeter picking up where he left off from the first half with another big run. Oh, the big-time tackle there, too. <laughs> Threw him to the turf and uh, did not care about any hurt feelings, broken bones, anything like that. I think you can see the frustration in that tackle, Eric. What do you I, think? You know, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say so uh, for such a close game. Another handoff to Streeter, and he's going to get buried in the backfield. Good open field tackle there by Nick Daggs as he comes up there and cuts down his legs. Yeah, great read by Daggs uh, heading through, getting around the block and, and taking him out low to avoid a, another vicious hit from the running back, Reggie Streeter. Brings up second and long. Three-point advantage for the Pharaohs as the Aztecs on defense are stacking the box here. They're going to back out of it. Gold with plenty of time. He's going to throw it into coverage and incomplete. I'm not sure who he was looking for there, but uh, that falls incomplete. Joe Davis, the tight end, but uh, not in the double coverage like that. Yeah, dicey, uh, dicey indeed. He had all day long. The clock had clearly expired in his head, and I think at that point he was just trying to get rid of the football. But uh, ill-advised throw into double coverage on that one. I have to imagine maybe there was a better option out there. He's going to have to think of uh, some good options here on third and forever. Empty set, gold, quick throw over the middle, tipped up in the air and incomplete again. We've seen plenty of balls like that today where he's thrown it into coverage, gold has, and uh, just has not been able to complete the catch. Yeah, and uh, Erica, a, a point you brought up, uh, barring the, well, the second half now started off two drives in a row from each team, non-scoring after we had nothing but scoring drives in the first half outside of the final drive before halftime. So uh, clearly an adjustment has been made. I guess they do have a chance for a field goal here. I apologize that they were a little further back. We'll see what Powers has up his sleeve or up his leg here as he's going to boot a long one, and he nails it from 49 yards. He is 3-4-3 here today, and uh, certainly the offensive MVP. I would say so, yeah. He's, he's making it happen for New Orleans right now, giving them a six-point lead over Mexico City. More simulation football league coming back on the other side of the break. Stay with us on 11 Sports and for the fans. Six plays, 24 yards, and a long go field goal from Austin Powers. 49 yards makes this a six-point advantage now for the Pharaohs. 16 to 10, your score here in the Bayou. And the Aztecs get another crack at the football. Their first possession, the only possession that did not result in a score of some type, as they will try and make up for that here. And we'll get a look at some scoring here from the Mexico City offense. And Cade, uh, they've certainly made leaps and bounds in this stack category here. Oh, just over the past few seasons, the points scored per game uh, is continually on the climb, on the, on the uh, sorry, on the rise. Season 13 last year, first in the league with 36 points. Absolutely incredible. And coming into this one, averaging about 31 a game, as right now they're sitting at a paltry 10, as Ray Bentley gets a first down carry to start things off after the 31. Yeah, great run by Bentley. Great read in between the blocks there to get up and get that first down. Plenty of wide open spaces there as uh, Tank Bennett comes in there and makes the tackle along with others. First and 10 from the 31. 
Download the ScoreStream app and follow your favorite team for live scoring updates when you aren't able to catch a game live. You can follow just your team or the entire league, the first eSport league, on the app. Wilson to throw. He's got Mike Daggs as Daggs plows ahead to the 43-yard line, and he is getting very close to that milestone there, Cade, that we spoke of a little earlier. Close to 4,000 yards, only the second tight end to ever do that, and he leads all tight ends in the league with receiving already. Inching closer and closer and closer, Eric, and a nice uh, nice play there to get him the football and get the first down on that one as well. Bueno onda, good vibes. As we have more action here as Wilson throws it down to Ray Bentley, stumbles a bit, but no one was anywhere near him as he's still able to get a good gain of six out to the 48-yard line. Oh, and I'm sure he's probably got to be somewhat disappointed with the stumble had he not stumbled. This play clearly a, a first down and possibly a bit more, but he cost himself just a little bit. Still a good play, a gain of six. Can't shake a stick at six yards. Keeps him ahead of schedule. Offset eye formation for the Aztecs. It's going to be a handoff to Phoenix Jones. He's been the bell cow today as he surges ahead to the 49-yard line as Zig Washington adds another tackle to his resume today. A nice run by Jones, but a nice stop by Zig Washington. Uh, kind of cutting him there. Uh, if I were a betting man and you told me that's what the play was going to be before it happened, I may have bet with Phoenix Jones getting the first down, but a good play by that New Orleans Pharaohs defensive line. Two wide outs, split, back, split backs in the gun here for Wilson. Pressure coming. He's going to throw it over the middle. Caught for first down yardage out to the 39-yard line as Richard Miracle Montague gets his catch. Yeah, great catch for him there. Great first down. Mexico City continuing to try to chug along here and uh, stay uh, stay caught up with the New Orleans Pharaohs, who now hold a six-point lead. They are at the New Orleans 39-yard line. Basic math telling me a touchdown and an extra point will take the lead here if they are able to get in the end zone. Just north of five minutes to go here in the third quarter as Ray Bentley... Gets another handoff, and he only gets a couple on that play. Second down. Second down, tackled on that play by 54, Nelson Lozano Jr., a rookie week three signing for the New Orleans Pharaohs. Sounds like some Italians in their blood. Lozano. I, I do believe. Oh, I said it with a Spanish accent. <laughs> Six-point game, Phoenix Jones with a handoff as he goes ahead to the 33-yard line. And, Kate, we talked about it a little bit that both these teams had to adjust on defense for the run game, and it looks like New Orleans certainly has. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the effort is there. They're, they're, the running backs are still getting some sort of uh, penetration up into the middle there, but it's not going nearly as, as uh, the distance, I guess you could say, that it was going in the first half. It's two, three, four, five yards as opposed to the nine, ten, seven, eight that we were seeing in the first half. Wilson on third down. He's going to throw it into coverage and incomplete. A couple different Pharaohs had their opportunity to get their hands on it as Aaron Arrington was one of them. And we'll see a Cole Varner field goal attempt. Arrington coming in with a head of steam there, I think was already imagining what kind of celebration he was going to do on that pick six. And uh, before he could uh, sniff the end zone out there, the ball was on the turf and dropped. Uh, that could have been a big game changer there for New Orleans. See if Varner can best... Austin Powers is a 49-yard attempt here. This one, I believe, would be from 50. Puts all his leg into it, gets it up, and it is through from 50 yards. So it is a three-point game now as we get another look. And, man, both these kickers coming out with a clinic today. That one had plenty of distance on it. Three or four yards extra could have gone through the uprights. We're going to take a short break. Simulation Football League action continues on 11 Sports and for the fans. Nine plays, 49-yard drive, resulted in that long 50-yard field goal by Cole Varner, and that narrows the gap to a three-point lead for the Pharaohs as they get another offensive possession here. 
with Aaron Arrington returning the football out to the 23 yard line. Well, Eric, it's going to be interesting to see what the New Orleans offense is going to try to dial up here. Are they going to turn back to Streeter, who has been very successful so far, or uh, is Xander going to take some shots downfield? Either way, I'm sure uh, some points on this particular drive would make them feel a little bit better about their three-point lead they now have over Mexico City. Delayed handoff goes to Reggie Streeter as he plows ahead for a gain of three yards out to the 26 to keep up with how your player and team are doing this season. Visit simulationfl.net for standings, leaderboards, and sortable team stats. The rookie big board is there too, tracking the next superstars in the SFL and the SFL minor league, which we have coming up here in just shy of a month. So certainly want to get on there, simulationfl.net for more information. Sander Gold. Going to check it down to Reggie Streeter. Didn't see anything down the field, which is where I think he was looking. And Streeter certainly paid for that reception as he uh, lays in the grass a little while. Uh, yeah, he, he was a little slow getting up there, Eric. He's another one that they might want to ask him if he knows uh, what the day of the week is still because, boy, he took a licking on that one. But he's been delivering hits himself all day long. It's Tuesday, right? Yeah. Is it? I'm not no? sure. Quarantine okay. day what now? I don't know. Xander Gold, seven-step drop on third and five. It is, he's thrown, and it could have gone the other way easily for a reservation for six as Nick Daggs had his hands on it, couldn't pull it in. Boy, we've seen that a couple times today now, Eric. Uh, some dropped interceptions uh, that uh, could have been some big momentum-turning moments in this game, and I'm sure that Mexico City would have liked to have had that one to try to get a lead over New Orleans. Yeesh. Just could not quite bring it in. Gosh. I, I don't know about you. My stomach kind of tightened up a little bit there when I saw that. Yeah, that's not the first time today I think I stopped breathing in anticipation of what was going on. And uh, that's uh, probably not for the best, but it's been an exciting football game uh, with the uh, tosses and turns just about at every corner. Let's say, don't, don't do that, man. You got to breathe. You gotta make sure it's that, important. It's that important. oxygen is key. It is key. Good punt here by Grassmanis as he gets it out to about the 40-yard line. That's where Mexico City will take over, courtesy of Jeffrey Dagg's return. And we will have more when we return from these messages. You're watching the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports and for the fans. Sixteen to thirteen, your score here in the Bayou. Alongside my best friend Kate Stevens, Eric Vinson here for the call here in New Orleans. We've got uh, Mark Lopez in the stat truck for us, executive producer and commissioner Cameron Irvine for us today as well as a one-handed grab. Are you kidding me? That was Phoenix Jones, the fullback, getting up there and doing his best Jordan impression. Wow! Wow! Oh my gosh, if you can see the look on my face right now. They might, uh, Phoenix Jones might start seeing some reps at wide receiver pretty soon if he's going to make catches like that. Yeah, you better decline that penalty. Good grief. I'm surprised. I really wanted to. Thank you. Thank you, Statstruck. Give me a replay. Get out of wow. here. Are you kidding me? Wow, man. Oh, man. That was nuts. That was nuts. Great play by Phoenix Jones, who's just getting it done at all kinds of wow. different levels today. Wow. Moves those chains to the 44-yard line. Mexico City in business here to take the lead as Wilson's going to sling it out to Ray Bentley and avoids the first tackler there. Spin moves out to the 36-yard line where he's taken down. Yeah, nice uh, nice play by Bentley getting on the outside there and giving him an extraordinarily manageable uh, second down, I believe it'll be here. Good tackle, good stop by New Orleans, though. Yeah, definitely, as that was uh, Shedrick Dynasty getting in there, the week four signee. Second and, two. Second and two now with just about two minutes to go here in the third quarter. 
Hand off to Ray Bentley, gets first down yardage and more as he tries to throw that spin cycle again. But uh, Nelson Lasano Jr. was not fooled. Not fooled at all. There you go, folks. Ray Bentley averaging six and a half, six point six to be exact yards per carry in this football game. While Phoenix Jones has had a very good game himself. Bentley has been no slouch either with the two-headed monster in the Mexico City backfield really rearing its head. Wilson, pressure coming. He throws it up there anyway into quadruple coverage and incomplete. I'm shocked that a New Orleans Sparrow did not come down with that. I'm not even going to list the names that were over there. It was just about the whole defense. <laughs> yeah, just about the entire defense over in that vicinity. I'm all for getting rid of the football, Eric. Don't you get me wrong. But uh, within reason, I guess. Take the sack. Don't turn the ball over. Uh, or at least throw it in a different direction. Offset eye formation on second down. Wilson to throw. He's going to sling it out to Bentley out of the backfield. Tries to throw the spin move again and gets wrapped up by Bryce Lincoln, the fourth overall pick in the SFL rookie draft. And it brings up a third down. Bryce Lincoln snagged him right out of the spin move and pulled him down there. I thought for a moment Bentley was going to be able to make a little bit more happen, but uh, you got to give the first round pick there a lot of credit. Good tackle by Bryce Lincoln. But that's what the young people call a yoink. <laughs> I do believe that is what they call it. Oh, good. Third down. Wilson in the gun, throws it quickly. First down yardage to K.L. Barrett as he makes it out into the SFL red zone to the 17-yard line. Great snag, great inside slant by K.L. Barrett, and just a good read by Matt Wilson to get it there very quickly. The right call there on third down for Mexico City. Might see a couple more plays here before the third quarter comes to a close. Three wide receivers for Wilson to work with. Instead, it's going to be a handoff to Ray Bentley. Sidesteps the defender, fumbles the football. It's on the turf, and New Orleans, I believe, has it. No, Mexico City somehow got it. Are you kidding me? Mike Daggs jumping on the football and saving Ray Bentley. A lot what? of grief there. I am in disbelief right now. I swear I saw a purple jersey just wee right onto the football. <laughs> and somehow Mike Daggs is able to cover up the football. Hats off to the big tight end as he keeps the possession going. Keep the fours up in the chat. We've got fourth quarter action. It's the Simulation Football League, live from the bayou, on the other side of the break. 11 Sports and 4 The Fans, stay with us.
Fourth quarter action getting underway here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And Mexico City tried to give the football away to New Orleans. They just did not want it. Mexico City retains possession. Second and one from the seven. Driving. Wilson. Got to throw it. Quarter of the end zone. Picked off. And that is a giveaway this time around. What a big time interception by the SFL's leading tackler, Tank Bennett, as he gets another interception on his uh, resume. Absolutely. Beautiful defensive read by Tank Bennett, who must have known that Dags, the big tight end there, was going to be the target for, uh, I'm sorry, for Matt Wilson on that play. Great read by him. Good takeaway. These teams have been trying to give it away to each other all day long. And finally, uh, Tank Bennett comes up with one right there. A key interception on that play for New Orleans. His third interception on the season. And none really bigger than that one as he sets up his offense here at the 12 of New Orleans. Reggie Streeter with a handoff as he lowers his shoulder, gets tackled by Dags and Tayumi. And again, none bigger than that one because of the playoff implications here. The Aztecs right at that 10th spot right now at four and five. New Orleans sitting at three and six right now. Obviously, they would get the tiebreaker, the head-to-head tiebreaker over the Aztecs and just said the whole SFL playoff situation into turmoil. It could happen. Anything could happen. As Streeter well on the way. gets a handoff out to the 20 for a third and short coming up. And man, you said it, Kate, it's well on its way, but we've got a whole quarter of action to go here. Only a three-point game. Yeah, Pablo Zamora and Nick Daggs once again having to come in there to slow down Reggie Streeter, who has been the workhorse for this New Orleans Pharaohs offense throughout the uh, entirety of this game. Third and two. Streeter sidecar right. Instead, Clifton's going to get a catch, and I don't think he's gotten a reception or even a target. Uh, since that big time catch in the first quarter yeah and uh, l- listen you could argue uh although this one much more minuscule as far as yardage goes uh, that this was just as big a first down and new orleans will continue to burn some clock in their uh attempt to get down the field and try to make this a two-score football game moves those chains first and 10 from the 22 three wide outs handoff instead to streeter as he gets imploded right at the line of scrimmage. That's uh, Jeffrey Daggs coming in there and making a stop there. Yeah, Daggs coming up from that uh, free safety position to make the tackle on that particular play. Second and nine, only a gain of one. So covering an awful lot of ground to get back there to stop him, Eric. Lots of ground that he covered there as Streeter trying to cover some ground himself. Bringing the football out to the 27-yard line. Gain of about four and a half or so. And uh, he is feeling it today. And, uh, man, we've seen great football from both of these teams today, Ken. Yeah, we sure have. We really have. Well, Ryan Taylor getting in there on that play to try to get a piece of Reggie Streeter on the tackle. But, uh, yeah, man, we, we've seen a lot of good football, especially out of the backfield uh, in particular for both teams. Not necessarily quite uh, the result, I think, that we thought we were going to see looking at this matchup coming into this week. But, man, it's been exciting. Threading the needle on that play there was Xander Gold. Connects with Ermac Jackson. He had a touchdown grab earlier in the ball game, the only one for New Orleans, and he's got a first down grab here. First down, Eric. Move those chains. Ermac Jackson's got something to say about that. Just about eight minutes to go here in the football game. And off to Reggie Streeter. Looked like he was a little slow getting out of the backfield. Might need a little bit of a break as uh, he was easily been able to be taken down by Dexter Jackson. Yeah, Dexter Jackson. I mean, these guys are, they're figuring it out. Unfortunately, probably a little too late that uh, hitting Reggie Streeter up high is not really the way to go. So uh, a good tackle by Jackson going for the ankles and and cutting him low on that one. Streeter, the lone back. And Gold's going to throw it to him coming out of the backfield. No blocking, though, and not able to avoid the tackler who is Jackson once again and uh, both these quarterbacks looking very very similar today yeah similar stats similar stats both of them have made an attempt to uh, try to give it away Matt Wilson the only one with a recorded interception the only takeaway of the football game and that belongs to Tank Bennett of the New Orleans Pharaohs but uh, yeah very similar the like I said the running backs have really been uh, the running backs and I guess you could argue the kickers too have been the offensive producers so far for both football teams 
Gold has something to say about that, though, as he airs it out to Badir Ejlauni towards the top of the screen in coverage with Pablo Zamora and still able to come down with the big time catch. Fantastic route to get behind the defense by Ejlauni on that one and a great read by uh, Gold to get rid of the football just in time. Giving chase back there was Pablo Zamora, who just couldn't quite catch up in time, but was able to at least make the tackle and save a touchdown. That's going to give New Orleans the football Mexico City's 34-yard line. They are driving, Eric. Yeah, great job by our camera crew, by the way, because I didn't even see how wide open Ajlauni was on that play and that Zamora was just simply playing catch-up at that point. Absolutely. A lot of ground to cover. Six and a half minutes to go here as we get another catch from the Pharaohs. Couldn't quite keep it in bounds, so only gets a gain of six. That is Ermac Jackson with another catch. Ermac Jackson become a popular target in this football game. Uh, great to see him getting involved. Like you said, Eric, the only touchdown so far through the air for New Orleans. And Kate, as uh, you can attest to, I am wearing my Seattle Tyrants t-shirt up here in the broadcast booth. If you want to get your hands on wonderful SFL apparel, visit sector6apparel.com for all league and team apparel as Gold goes ahead and airs it out again to Ejlauni as he makes it out to the 16-yard line in the SFL red zone we go. Ejlauni, a uh, heck of a catch. Good, I mean, way to hold on to the football because he took a lick on that play right there and uh, has uh, become a, a favorite target of Gold on this particular drive right here. Six minutes to go here in the ball game. First and 10 from the 16. Streeter, the lone back. Four down lineman for the Aztecs. Gold, gonna sling it to Streeter. He's got a blocker out in front of him. Can't avoid the first tackler, and that was Jeffrey Daggs. Gets some help there by Tayumi, and he only gets a gain of a couple. Yeah, great. I mean, good hit by Jeffrey Daggs. Once again, coming up from that free safety spot, hitting Streeter and holding on for dear life until the squad could get there and help him take him down. But uh, that's what that's what happens, man. Teamwork. You need te you need good teamwork, especially when it comes to tackling this guy who's just been laying the lumber all day long. Hand off this time to Streeter, and he gets stood up again. Not quite having the same success as he did in the first half again, Cade. Looks like both these defenses heeded our advice and uh, made some adjustments at halftime. I mean, they're selling out for it, and they're and but you know what? Here's the thing that's happening, Eric, that you didn't see happening in the first half when it came to stopping Reggie Streeter. Is the tackles were not there. There was a lot of broken tackles. Uh, that he was plowing through and earlier in the football game my assumption would be that the defense would wear out it appears that reggie streeter is the one that is slightly wearing out here as far as delivering the hits go gold gonna air it out and that is ajlauni wide open on the out route there towards the top of the screen but they're gonna mark him shy of the first down and honestly i think that's a good spot yeah good spot i mean he had it and uh when he put the ball in his right hand and went out of bounds, it ended up being just short as opposed to sticking it out over the pylon there. But a uh, great play anyways to try to make it happen. It looks like they're going to go for it, Eric. I was about to say, speaking of making it happen, Golden the offense is out there, and why the heck wouldn't you have him out there? Streeter's been very successful in these short-yarded situations. Will they give it to him, though? Trying yeah, to drive the yeah. defense off sides and uh, to no avail as New Orleans burns their first time out. And uh, honestly, I, I think that's a good place to kind of use that strategy there, Cade. Yeah, not not bad at all. I mean, I thought maybe they would be honoring the late Kenny Rogers and uh, pulling the old gambler there and go ahead and snap that football, give it to Streeter and see what he could make happen. He's been extraordinarily reliable in that situation today. But I also understand the strategy of, you know what, let's go ahead and use this timeout. Take our three points. Uh, we've had our, our kicker has been extraordinarily reliable. Austin Powers the entire day. So take a six-point lead and see what you can make happen with just a little over four minutes left in this football game. The definition of knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. Chippy here for Powers as he boots it up and through from 22 yards. That's going to make it a six-point game, 19-13 to 13 now. As the Pharaohs are clinging on to life, and man, oh man, can they throw a wrench into the playoffs if they get a victory. You're watching Simulation Football League action live on 11 Sports for the fans.
Back live in New Orleans. 440 left to go here in the football game. New Orleans with a lead. Six points on top of the Mexico City Aztecs. 19-13, to your score. As Powers boots it down the field, that's going to be Joe Clark Jr. fielding the football right at his own goal line, and he's going to bring it out to the 23-yard line. Well, big drive. Mexico City here. Big time drive, and we've got some big time quarterbacks here as well as uh, two of the SFL's passing leaders uh, in the top five here are on display here. Xander Gold at four and Matt Wilson on five. Yeah, two of the passing leaders who have not quite hit the numbers I believe they are used to so far today. It's been uh, predominantly a run-heavy game for both offenses as the uh, passing game has struggled just slightly, and the defenses have played extraordinarily well on the back end. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, defense of Mexico City, they have limited Streeter to only one attempt that is over five yards in all 13 of his touches after the half. And that one attempt was a 20-yard run. Absolutely right. incredible. Absolutely incredible. Considering the success he had in the first half, that's a heck of a job and heck of an adjustment for that Mexico City defense. 100%. And hats off to Mark Lopez down there in the stat truck giving us those saucy statistics up here in the broadcast booth as Matt Wilson is going to air it out long. He's got a man wide open towards the top of the screen out to about midfield. And that is Miracle Montague with another catch. Boy, the lefty put some uh, pizzazz on that thing, man. A little hot sauce on his hot dog before the game. They say he put some zing in the swing. And uh, wow, what a throw and catch there. Yeah, I, I, I got to agree with uh, Eddie Gates there. I thought he was gone. I, I honestly did. <laughs> he was so wide open there and uh, just uh, immense speed from the Pharaoh secondary to catch up with him. Split backs in the backfield for Wilson. He's going to throw it towards the near sideline. Caught, and that is first down yardage by Joe Clark Jr., as I believe that's his first catch of the ballgame. I do believe it is as well. Yeah, Joe Clark Jr. in his first season over with Mexico City after spending a season with Oklahoma City last year. And, right. uh, yeah, heck of, a, heck, of a, heck of a catch and way to get up for the first down. They're, they're driving all of a sudden, Eric. Things are getting a little, uh, little dicey for that New Orleans defense, allowing quite a bit of movement here. Getting a little sweaty on that New Orleans sideline. First and 10, Wilson. Pressure's coming. He's going to go down. Man, he avoided the first sack somehow, some way, but he wasn't going to get away from the next three. No, sir. Ryan Taylor from the defensive tackle position getting in there and finishing the job. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, other side on it, Ray West defensive tackle. My apologies, folks. Getting there and taking down Matt Wilson on that play. And I, the only thing that probably makes you feel better than a sack there is a turnover. But uh, that's going to back him up and make this uh, a little bit harder for Mexico City. Chris Leone, the first guy to get there, couldn't quite wrap him up, but uh, his buddy Ray West was able to complete the job. Second down and long. Wilson, quick throw over the middle, caught, and he gets all that yardage back and more as he brings it out to the 28-yard line. Joe Clark Jr. with another catch. Quick throw by Matt Wilson, finding Joe Clark working that inside seam of the defense. And as you can see, just wide open. And, uh, man, those Pharaohs just couldn't get there fast enough. Tank Bennett in pursuit on that play. His sixth tackle of the ball game, one interception to his credit as well. As he's played a lights out ball game on the defensive end for the Pharaohs. Third and short, big time down here for both teams. Split backs, hand off to Phoenix Jones, and he gets plowed right at the line of scrimmage. What a play by the defensive front of the Pharaohs and Zig Washington. Wow, wow, man. I just never saw that coming. The, uh, the penetration that Washington was able to get on that play. He basically met him in the backfield as soon as he took the handoff. And that, uh, boy, that, that puts a huge wrench in the plans for Mexico City here. Aztecs knowing the gravity of this situation. They're going to go for it and they're not going to get it. New Orleans is going to get a turnover on downs. Wow. Wow, Eric. I, whoa, man, oh, man. That's exactly what New Orleans needed on that play. And based off the success that they've had so far running the football, uh, Mexico City, I think, had to believe that that was going to work for them. And, and a great job by that Pharaohs defense shutting it down. And that was quick, too. They quickly got out of the huddle, quickly got up to the line, ran the play. New Orleans was ready for it. Unbelievable job by this defense. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. In all likelihood, the last play before the two-minute warning, as it will be a Streeter handoff, and he's going to surge ahead to the 33-yard line for a gain of two. And that will be 
the two minute warning here in New Orleans. Man, oh man, I have got goosebumps up here in the broadcast booth. This is a great football game. Don't miss the final two minutes. We've got more simulation football league action on the other side of the break. Live on 11 Sports and for the fans. A very impressive turnover on downs by this Pharaohs defense gives their offense the football as they've got a second and eight from the 33 yard line. Two minutes to go here at home for the Pharaohs as Streeter is trying to find holes here in that defense and he will bring them up to the 37 yard line where the Pharaohs will call their first timeout. Absolutely. I just the, the way these events have unfolded here, Eric, in the last. I guess 60 seconds of this football game, absolutely incredible. I mean, what a what a treat it is to uh, to watch this. And man, it's it's not over yet. This is a huge third down for Mexico City. I apologize. That was actually Mexico City burying their first time out. Pharaohs burning their first time out earlier in the second half. And off to Streeter, and Streeter is going to be stopped before the line to game. Mexico City burning their second time out. They'll have one remaining. And unless the Pharaohs offense comes out here and rolls the dice, Mexico City's going to get the football back for one timeout. With plenty of time on the clock, too. Just under two minutes left. Uh, it just, here we go again, I guess is the best I can tell you, Eric. And it would be something if they went for it back here at their own 38. Looks like they're going to have uh, Gordon Gressmatis come out here and attempt a punt. No pressure coming from Mexico City. They're going to set up the return. Jeffrey Daggs met right away, right at the 25-yard line of Mexico City. And man, oh man, if you thought this game was wild, stay tuned. We've got more to come. Charleston is going to be visiting South Florida to take on the Storm. Uh, Predators and the Storm immediately following this game at the top of the hour. So that will be 7 Eastern, 6 Central. And that's live on 11 Sports and for the fans, so you do not want to miss that. First and 10, a minute 45 to go. Mexico City with one timeout. Three wideouts towards the top of the screen. Wilson gonna throw that way into coverage, picked off. New Orleans got the pick that they needed and they're gonna return it out to the 30 yard line. And that is Aaron Arrington virtually sealing the deal here for the Pharaohs. Aaron Arrington, a heck of a play on that one. Wow, just comes up underneath, just slightly overthrown it appears by Matt Wilson. If he can bring that one down a little bit, and a little bit more towards the, uh, the outside of the football field there. Uh, there's a chance that that's probably caught, but overthrown and a great read by Arrington, who comes up with probably the play of the game right there. He had a big-time kick return to start the football game off, and that is a big-time interception of the Hall of Famer Matt Wilson as the Pharaohs will just simply take a knee. The best formation in football is the victory formation as Mexico City can only stop the clock that one time there. So 96 seconds to go before New Orleans locks up their fourth victory of the season and send the right. SFL playoff picture into complete turmoil. <laughs> absolutely. They sure did their best to try to make that happen, didn't they? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. They fought tooth and nail today. And uh, hats off to both teams, really, because this was an absolutely incredible ball game. Uh, and uh, just a pleasure to call. So we, we certainly appreciate both teams for putting in their best efforts. Uh, as I mentioned, we have more football to come at the top of the hour, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Stephen Hacker, Dan Mitchell will be on the call for that one in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, the Atlanta Swarm and the Queen City Corsairs will cap off the evening of football. And uh, Commissioner, Executive Producer Extraordinaire Cameron Irvine We'll have the call on that one along with Charles Doherty. And then we've got more football to come on Monday and Tuesday as well. So please stay tuned to 11 Sports for the fans and the SFL family of networks. Uh, man, oh man, Cade, what, what a, an impressive showing here from both teams. 
And uh, honestly, Mexico City's going to get the football back with a little they're bit of time still, left on the clock. They're still going to have a chance, man. And if things uh, if things play out the way they've played out so far, expect the unexpected is about the only thing I can tell you. I'm sure New Orleans would like to wrap this one up. And uh, I'm sure that the uh, punter has been notified to go ahead and kick this one out of bounds if he possibly can. Don't give him an opportunity to return it. Well, they got the field goal unit on the field. That's Austin Powers. Oh, I guess it is. You're sure right. Long field goal attempt here. This will be from 51 if he nails it, and he Nailed does. It. That's the nail in the coffin right there. And, man, oh, man, Mexico City would have to pull a big-time rabbit out of their hat now. The New Orleans Pharaohs have rode the leg of Austin Powers and the uh, the running ability of Reggie Streeter through this game. And, uh, yeah, it's this is a clear victory, it appears, for New Orleans Pharaohs and a, a great win for them. They've now evened the series to 1-1 one and one against Mexico City. And uh, this was this was definitely a close one as well. The hats off to New Orleans for uh, squeaking out this victory here and keeping themselves in the thick of playoff uh, the playoff picture. Excuse me. As uh, Joe Clark Jr. gets the return out to the 22-yard line. Uh, up next for both of these squads, uh, we will see them both travel on the road. Uh, New Orleans going up to South Carolina to take on the Charleston Predators next week. And the Mexico City Aztecs will travel to Tulsa, uh, deep in the heart of Oklahoma, to take on the Desperados. Uh, so both of these teams facing away games next week in Week 11. Uh, only a couple more weeks to go after this one, folks. So please stay tuned to the SFL Family and Networks, along with 11 Sports and for the fans, as Mexico City completes a pass over the middle, and that is going to do it here from New Orleans. 22 to 13, your score. The Pharaohs moving up to four and six. The Aztecs falling to four and six. Cade, we're going to get an extra look here at the final game stats and highlights. What jumps out at you? Uh, you know, more so than uh, it's just wide. You know, as far as pass yards and rush yards, they ended up actually being relatively even, which is not necessarily something you're used to seeing. You're used to seeing the passing yards be significantly higher. Both teams ran the ball extraordinarily well in the first half and then adjusted very well to each other in the second half, slowing each other down quite a bit. But, uh, boy, what a fun one. That one stayed close. Both defenses really stood up in the second half, uh, coming away with uh, coming away with a turnover New Orleans did uh, twice. And, uh, boy, just what a uh, what a heart stopper, Eric. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Kay, okay, that you, you hit the nail on the head, I think, with the turnovers. As we get a look at the first one here, that was Tank Bennett. Uh, right after, and, and New Orleans could have easily hung their heads at this point, like, oh, shoot, we didn't come up with that fumble that was gift-wrapped to us by Ray Bentley. Instead, Tank Bennett with a very impressive coverage on Mike Daggs and is able to come up with the interception there. And then the final one at the game that just, uh, at the end of the game, that just kind of sealed the deal for the Paros. Yeah, sealed the deal indeed. And, uh, yeah, man, just exciting. It, the, the plays that did come from the past game, vast majority of the completed ones were big ones, man, and it's... Uh, Matt Wilson, I'm I'm sure uh, you know a little upset he didn't get the uh, the touchdown to tie uh, or the touchdown to pass, but um, you know that just gives you something to uh, look forward to the next time Mexico City plays. Got something to look forward to there. Mike Daggs didn't quite uh, eclipse the 4,000 yard mark either. That's something to look forward to in the next Mexico City game as well. But a uh, all around great game by uh, by both teams. The turnovers, the difference in this one. Turnovers were certainly the difference in this one as we get a look at our player of the game. It is Austin Powers. Hey, kickers are people too. Austin Powers, five for five with the longest of 51, which was the nail in the coffin to give his team the victory. Yeah, Austin baby, yeah. Dan, 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 dan. On behalf of my best friend, Kate Stevens, Mark Lopez down in the stats truck, executive producer, commissioner extraordinaire, Cameron Irvine. My name is Eric Benson. Thank you for tuning into this presentation of the Simulation Football League. Stay tuned to the top of the hour. We've got more football coming up next on 11 Sports and for the fans.